Hello my soccer universe, let's look back at what happened yesterday in the Europa and the Europa Conference League. Um, I have to say it's all pretty much still open. I think there are only two ties where I would argue that those are over, which is of course Sevilla with a huge 3-0 win at home to PSV, where I really have a hard time seeing PSV coming back. And then of course these guys, Fiorentina, going to Braga, which would seem to be the highlight fixture in the Conference League uh, playoffs. And just going there and winning 4-0. But those are the only two. Everything else is very much finely in balance. Um, if we look at the overall results, there were a lot of 1-0s. Even 0-0 in there. And then the 4-0 in the Conference League. Where there were more goals scored in the Europa League. Which is also, to be honest, not too uncommon. You see kind of a little bit of a step down. Uh, having said that, Champions League was not too goal field so far either but it was only four games and now we had a total of 16 8 in each what also annoyed me was the coverage yesterday in austria um you know i watched um they call it the conference so they switched between uh the games and they always pick four for each slot and for each slot they picked the four europa league games which I find a little bit annoying because, uh, yes, they were largely the better games, but in the Conference League, I think at least the Braga Fiorentina, I would have put ahead of Schachter against the Rennes, honestly. But, you know, it's their decision. So I cannot tell you much about the Conference League, where I want to start. I mean, I give you here the results, and of course the standard result is Fiorentina going to Braga, winning 4-0. It took a Jovic goal just before the half, then... Uh, Tormena was sent off in the 55th for Braga, at which point everything, uh, all hell broke, broke, broke loose. It was Jovic getting a uh, brace. He comes off, Cabral comes on, and he continues the scoring in the 79th and the 90th, making it a scoreline that where you would say Fiorentina uh, is in the next round for sure. Uh, the others are Bode and 0 0 against Lech Poznan, Karabakh 1 0 over Ghent, maybe a Teeny bit of a surprise, Trabzonspor 1 0 over Basel. Also, not that um, maybe not super expected, but you know, I, I can see that. Larnaca 1 0 over Dnipro. Lazio, uh, another that was another remarkable one um, where Patrick is getting signed off in the 15th minute. However, Lazio get the win thanks to the Immobile goal just before the break, fourth minute of stoppage time. So, big win there as well. Then another bit surprising result with Ludogorets 1-0 over Anderlecht. So, not a really good showing for the Belgian teams. And then Partizan go to Sheriff and win 1-0 there as well. So, if we look now at the overall standings, you kind of see uh, on top not much has, has changed. Western Villarreal and Nice. However, Fiorentina more or less through. Lazio also with an 82% chance. Those are the two teams that have played that are now in the top. The Rapsonspor also uh, boosting their chances as to Partizan. But I think there we are already pulling a little bit uh, to see whether those will move on. Uh, give you also the return fixtures, which of course will be played in one week's time. So Thursday. Uh, and I don't see really a standout fixture. It would be more in, in, in interesting if you see how it develops. Maybe there could be some interesting results there. Going over to Europa League, where, of course, I can tell you a whole lot more. I was a little bit uh, disappointed by Ajax against Union. I know Union are really hard to play against. But Union probably should have won that game. Uh, yes, Ajax had more control of the game. But Union, they scored the goal through Thurs uh, Thorsby, which was then a handball. Yeah, it was a little bit hard to see, but I guess it was there. Um, but they completely took the life out of Ajax. And as I said, could have won. Um, the marquee fixture, of course, was Barcelona against United. And it lived in a way up to it. Yes, if you like defending, it was probably not your game. Uh, Xavi undoing his defense by playing suddenly uh, Alonso who at least scored the opener but this was a game where there were many chances created which made it very entertaining to watch uh, however you know for a coach it's maybe one of those games where the spectator loves it and the coach hates it um, once Barcelona were one in the head Rashford continues his great uh, scoring form gets an, almost an immediate equalizer then Kunde Ongol turns the game around and Rafinha can get an equalizer. Barcelona then pushing. Probably should have gotten a penalty. But on the other side, it was also uh, potentially a red card for Barcelona in there. So, you know, 
uh, give and take over I think the 2-2 was all right everything to play for however Pedri and Gavi are out in, with, in addition to Dembele so I think this is tilting very heavily towards United uh, looking on to uh, looking overall Salzburg snatch a lucky win yes they started brightly but Roma then controlled the game created a few chances Belotti and Abraham missing two big ones and then very late on, Paul Pavlovich makes a cross in the Capaldo, can head in in the 88th and a little bit turned the game on, on its head. I think a draw probably would have been a little bit more correct uh, result there. Mourinho not happy for sure, but you know, uh, uh, the Austrians are all happy, are all happy. Now we hate Salzburg, we hate Salzburg, although they can do some points for Europe. And then Schachter against Rennes, Rennes didn't do much wrong in the first half. But out of two situations, they can see two goals. Yes, the first goal was maybe a uh, bad defending, but uh, uh, the penalty uh, that was given, that was a weird one, honestly. It has, it has to change in the rules because, you know, the Ren player wants to clear the ball and a striker comes in and then he gets hit. But uh, this is not a foul, honestly. I'm sorry. This it, 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 it is one thing that needs to be looked at. Uh, and then Mondanda almost had it. Toko Akambi pulls one back for Rennes. I was surprised Monda died and Toko Toko Akambi, they actually have a really good squad that they have playing such crap over, over, overall. Uh, but Schachter hangs on to a 2-1 win, which leaves everything open. Uh, the other Ligue 1 team in uh, Monaco got actually a pretty impressive win at Leverkusen. They controlled the first half, but the first goal was all about Mbolo. Basically challenging Radetzky on a back pass in his own box and then Radetzky uh, miscontrols the ball and goal. it goes into his own net. It was kind of a really ridiculous uh, own goal to, to concede. In the second half, the Leverkusen come back, come out storming and it was all down to Florian Wirtz who had a pretty nice assist or, or, or already equalized the way he threads through and gets the ball to uh, Frimpong, played to Diaby, it's 1-1. And then he himself makes it 2-1 uh, in the 59th. At that point, you really thought that Monaco is going to take him apart. The other pulls one back, you know. Ben Yedda came on shortly after, changing a little bit the, the complexion. And then um, Disa C in late uh, gets a stoppage time winner. So a big win for Monaco there at a point where you really thought that Leverkusen is going to take it. And maybe on balance it was deserved, but I think it was also more looking for a draw. Uh, the draw is a result that not... Definitely cherished. Juve took an early lead through a brilliantly played deep ball from uh, Di Maria onto Chiesa who hands it back to Vlahovic. What a brilliant goal that was. And Juve actually looked really, really good in a replay of the semi-final of the 95-96 Champions League. And I remember this one so... I remember Viali scoring. I remember the non-church. So it was, it was kind of special to see this one again. Uh, Juve had largely control of the game. However, they didn't make the second goal, and this was to their own and un un doing it. And Blas, with a wonderful count, kind of take, gets a strike in the 60th to equalize it. And then you have a few times a little bit uh, bad luck. There was a shot from Chiesa that hits the uh, underside of the bar, then goes on the uh, upright and out again. So a really billiard shot. Then uh, Olympic corner by Di Maria also hits the crossbar. But on the other side, not had their chances to actually uh, win that game as well. Very late on, uh, should have been a penalty for Juve, I think. But then the referee decides that he was the defender was pushed down. It was kind of one of those decisions where you don't really know what was happening. But, you know, 1-1 uh, it is, leaves the tie open and definitely makes it interesting. And Juve definitely want to win the Europa League because that's their path into the Champions League next season. Sevilla against PSV was all PSV for about 20-25 minutes. And then Sevilla got back in, into the game and scored then really three brilliant goals. A nicely played one through Navas gets to end the series just before the half. Makes it 1-0 against Sevilla a little bit against the run of play. And then after the second half, uh, the way Ocampos, who is back from Ajax... Uh, he, because it, it seems like Ocampos plays for Sevilla. No, no, no. He was for a half season at Ajax. Now he's back there. Proper, 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 proper. The way he takes the ball, turns us around. A brilliant goal. And then Goodell, uh, similarly, also assists by Ocampos. So that change, putting Ocampos on for Brian Hill at halftime, definitely changed the complexion of that game. And it was a really hard one uh, for Sevilla to swallow. Um, 
and then Sporting, also a bit like Juve, but uh, even worse, controlling the game, but not creating chances, not uh, rewarding themselves. And uh, this Midtjylland team is one that is not to be sneered at. Uh, they take the lead through a defensive mistake, sure from far out, uh, brilliant strike. I mean, the goalie plays it out uh, to him. And he just goes to the other corner and this is a straight ball in the uh, really brilliant strike. But very little on Coates, uh gets an equal. That was the deserved result for Sporting, but I think Sporting would have hoped for more in this game. Um, and so, yeah, with all these results, the, here the standings for the favorites, if you like. It's not the standings, it's uh, the ranking of, of, of the favorites. With Barcelona and United very much in a balance now, United, as I said, are the favorites. Uh, this allows the Real Sociedad to go up because we're already in the next round, but it seems like that whoever goes through of United Barcelona will immediately vault into the second, if not if the first position, but uh, probably, probably second uh, position there. Sevilla also very much boosting the chances as to Monaco, who have now 97 and 85% of advancing. Juve is still the favorites, uh, but it's also now Union Berlin and Red Bull Salzburg also having a slight advantage over Roma, although I can see Roma turning that one around again. As well. Return legs, you see them here. The late one United against Barcelona is the big one, but I have to say the not Juve, that's an interesting one. Also, Monaco and Leverkusen. I don't think this is over yet. And uh, spare a thought for Union against Ajax. I think this is a very intriguing match overall, played at the Alta First Array. So, uh, interesting stuff happening there for sure. Any case, looking forward to these return legs and then, of course, the draw, because I want to see how this is panning out that we finally have everyone. The, the playoff round is just an appetizer. However, a really delicious one, thinking we have United against Barcelona. Any case, let me know what you thought about the games yesterday and what you could see and watch. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!